Good morning. Welcome to the Community for Conscious Living Weekly Live broadcast. Today is Sunday, April 16th of 2023. The Community for Conscious Living is a community dedicated to personal transformation for universal harmony, healing the planet by making inspired changes in ourselves and in our daily lives that create a sustainable environment and a peaceful world. Today's topic is about increasing focus increasing focus because our world is just gotten to be when it's been for a while yes i know but it's gotten to be so full of distractions that it makes it increasingly difficult to focus and i talk to more and more people who you know talk about add and adhd and and i understand that yes that can be a a serious issue a serious diagnosis and I also believe that the word gets used because we're just too easily distracted by so much stimulus going on. And I speak from personal experience because there was a time where, you know, where for in my case, it was a little bit different, but I had actually just pulled back from the world so much. And I was doing so much meditation, which we do here, that I was becoming really kind of open and expansive in a way that then made it hard for me to focus on anything that required a continuous thought over a short period of time to actually start something and finish it get all the way through it and so i started doing sudoku puzzles in the mornings after my meditation i would still do my meditation and be in this beautiful state and then i would do a puzzle and bring my like exercise my mental muscle so that I could bring my um uh, like enhance my ability to focus right and so in at that time in my life I was not I didn't have television I didn't have you know social media or anything like that and I used the um uh, you know, I had to like exercise the muscles so that I could focus. Now that I'm living with my dad and I'm living with, you know, television on from 7 a.m. to midnight every day and from, you know, with social media and all of these things going on, it's a different kind of distraction that keeps us from focusing on what is truly important. And what is truly important is that which brings us wholeness right? To heal means to make whole, that which brings us healing, that which brings us fulfillment in an inner sense of peace and joy. So in today's meditation and healing circle, we're going to use some sacred sound codes, some divine names and breath to call all the parts of ourselves into a centered alignment and enhance our ability to focus. All right, so let's go ahead and come into our meditation and healing circle. Let's come into our circle sitting side by side, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, knee to knee, coming together as one in the name of the one most merciful, ever compassionate. And let's just begin by calling all of the parts of yourselves, all of the little distracted places that all the that are thinking other thoughts and in present in other areas of your life or of someone else's life just make a call out to those places and invite them to come here to be present with you to join you here as my one of my favorite neil douglas clots in likes to say or says in the sufi book of life he talks about calling to the cacophony of selves to join you around wisdom's table, being around your heart, right? So bring all of that cacophony of selves into your heart, to join you around the table of wisdom at the center of your heart. And let's invite everything, all the parts of ourselves. And I even like to imagine all of the pores of my skin, and the cells of my body all turning to face in one direction. So as we turn toward the center of our circle, let's bring everything to face into the center. As we call on our source in the name of the one most merciful, ever compassionate, we call on you. We ask you to send your essence of your pure divine light. Just imagine, sense, feel this pure divine light 
as it streams into the center of our circle sitting filling the center of our circle with pure divine light and let this light be like a tractor beam imagine it like a tractor beam and let all <laughs> like a moth to the flame right let yourself be like a moth to the flame that is so attracted and drawn to the light and you truly are that's why we're so easily distracted probably by social media and television and everything else it's like artificial light that attracts us and draws us but let this pure divine light ya nur the pure divine light streaming into the center of our circle let this be the light that attracts us today and let it attract all of your focus all of your energy all of the parts of yourself to focus on that pure divine light and just let that light stream out to meet you to meet all of your senses your eyes your ears your nose your mouth the pores of your skin your cells let it be met by that light and let that light be absorbed into your body ya nur let that light be absorbed into your body and in the name of the one most merciful ever compassionate we call on you we ask you to send your essence of your unconditional love that pure unconditional love and just feel sense that pure unconditional love streaming into the center of our circle and take a full and gentle breath into your heart and as you exhale just turn your heart center wisdom's table that funnel of energy that extends from the front of your heart from the head of your table and turn that toward the light and just Feel this pure, unconditional love, Yahwadud, Yahwadud, this pure, unconditional love as it streams in to the center of our circle and let this funnel, wisdom's table, just be filled with this unconditional love and use your heart center like a breathing portal and breathe that unconditional love in through the center of your heart. Just breathe it in breathe it in through the center of your heart and as you exhale just let your heart center release the clutter the blocks and barriers right that which distracts us from being present with our own center with our own inner wisdom with our own core truth and inhale in that unconditional love and absorb that pure divine light breathing it in breathing it in breathing it in and let it meet all of yourselves all the cacophony of selves within you let them be met by pure divine light and unconditional love and invite them to be loved right it's one thing to call on the unconditional love to breathe it into your body but invite all or and excuse me invite all of the parts of yourself to be loved to receive love to feel love to be loved and invite them to feel what it feels like to be surrounded in pure unconditional love love with no conditions that's total complete acceptance total complete acceptance as is not when you change or when you perfect or when you do it right or do enough or be enough but now as you are in your current perfection you are enough allow yourself to be loved by this pure unconditional love
And together we call on our source in the name of the one most merciful, ever compassionate. We call on you. We ask you to send your essence of your eternal compassion. Just imagine, perceive this eternal compassion. This is the pure divine compassion and unconditional compassion. It is the ocean of living consciousness. It is the ocean that we swim in, right? We think only the fish swim in oceans, but we are also swimming in an ocean. We are floating in an ocean. And this ocean is the eternal compassion. It is pure compassion. It is pure compassion. So as you inhale in this pure divine light and unconditional love, inhale it all the way into the center of your body, all the way into your vertical core, upright your spine, and let it come all the way into the core of your body, just in front of your spine all the way along your center channel. And as you exhale, let yourself drop down and land into your hips, land into your pelvic bowl, and lean back into your body. And just let your whole body rest into this ocean of eternal compassion. Let yourself be held. Let yourself be contained and nurtured and loved and embraced in this womb of compassion. In the Arabic language, the Sufi teachings, the name of the eternal compassion, the ocean of living consciousness is Rahman. And it means pure compassion, the compassion, the existence of compassion. Right. This is the, the eternal existence that extends beyond our time and space realm. It's in the before there was a need to speak about eternity, right? When there is no time and space, there's no need to speak about eternity. In this realm, there's time and space, so we speak about eternity. My teacher used to call that the pre-eternity. In that realm, before this time and space. When eternity wasn't an issue. This is the Rahman. <laughs> and this is the ocean of living consciousness, the pure compassion. And it also comes from the same root word as the word for womb. Right? And hence we are all cells of one body contained within this womb of eternal compassion. Or the pre-eternal compassion. Rahman. It is the womb that contains us all as one body, one existence. And just let yourself rest into that and be held, be nurtured, be loved. Breathing in pure divine light and unconditional love and resting into the womb of eternal compassion. And uh, I just want to invite you just to, again, to kind of notice where your thoughts are. If you've had an issue with focus, with concentration, just kind of tune into what that feels like when you feel like you can't focus, when you feel like you're feeling distracted, feel like... You can't be present with one thing for very long before you go to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing. And just kind of tune in. If you notice where you sense that in your body, you notice where you sense it like in your head space, in your mental space. I know this, I had a, actually an issue with um, carbon monoxide poisoning at one point uh, many years ago, many, many years ago. And it really affected my, it feels like my frontal lobe. And I can, uh, it's like I've had a fog there ever since. And 
sometimes thoughts go there and they just get lost and they can't quite come out in words which is amazing that i can talk for so long on these meditations in one topic and stay somewhat focused somewhat but the um that's one way where i notice that a challenge with focus i guess and i know a lot of of you or at least some of the people who join us here regularly also have a challenge with focus so i invite you to just notice where that shows up in your mental space in your head space in your body in your field in your heart just notice what you notice and then tune into your breath tune into your emotional body just notice any sensations in your physical body your energy body and just make a, a note of what's happening i want to introduce one of the divine names for concentration which is al mutakabir I put it in the email and it's also on the website, Mutahabir. And the transliteration of this word is spelled M as in Mary, U, T as in Tom, A, K as in King, A, B as in boy, B as in boy, I, R. It's got two Bs. Mutahabir. 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 So we just invoke the name. We use Ya, that means O. So we're calling on, invoking the divine power of Al Mutahabir. It means concentration. It also means the. Um, the creator the maker i'm gonna look in Felzia's book because she defines it a little bit differently the majestic the high and mighty the sublime the proud this is Felzia's book the divine names and in the uh, sufi book of life neil douglas klotz defines it as concentration and i want to read from neil douglas klotz book I'm feeling it in my head. Al Mutakabir. The famous Sufi of Baghdad, Abdul Qadir Jalani, represents the way of concentration in classical Sufism. His writings emphasize being in right relationship with the divine and present powerful practices of the heart that lead to mastery through accomplishment. His message essentially is what the heart can hold, the being can accomplish. And it is not worth the heart holding anything unless it comes from the one. One of Jelani's practices for developing concentration was this. Don't begin something without completing it. If following through is a problem for you, try beginning with anything. Getting up for a glass of water or following through with your intention to stop work at a particular time for lunch. Like these are really simple things that you can do to start to build that muscle. Like I said that I used to, is after my morning meditation, I would sit and do a Sudoku puzzle and just to be able to focus my thoughts and build that muscle. It really is like a muscle that we can build so we can start with simple things. And then back to the reading, it says, even though these things may be ultimately irrelevant, take up each for a while as a sacred practice. Make it a sacred practice. That is, intend to do the action and then do it. Don't let your concentration unconsciously waver to something else. So start with something small and simple that you can do. And we're going to use this divine name as a way to build our muscle today. He says, a practice like this doesn't aim to make you obsessed with the minor occupations of life, 
It's only practicing after all. Instead, it intends to build your inner strength and concentration for when life really requires them. The practice is like a dress rehearsal before the performance. I think of it as like, you know, working out to training for a race. <laughs> if you're a runner, it's your cross training. Another benefit is that when you find yourself becoming obsessed by a thought or feeling, you can use the powers of concentration and focus developed through spiritual practice to release it. So when you become obsessed with something, you can use your power of focus and concentration to release yourself from the obsession. Concentration doesn't mean thinking a lot. As the modern Sufi Idris Shah once said, a great deal of thought is only a substitute for the thoughts that the individual would really find useful at the time, right? This book, I believe, was written before our um, social media became really popular, and I know it was, and our um, distractions became more, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Speaking of focus. Okay, I really need this practice today. Um, but, you know, before the the, the uh, distractions and we became so bombarded, so bombarded with these minute distractions that are everywhere. Instead, concentration means developing the energy of the heart, which is planted with interest, sprouts into affection, and then blossoms into something for which the word love is only a shadow. Think about that. Something for which the word love is only a shadow. And ultimately, everything, everything, everything becomes that for which the word love is only a shadow. The poet Rumi once said, whether you love God or love a human being, if you love enough, you will come into the presence of love itself. Perhaps life is calling you right now to concentrate on what is important in your life or to refocus on your next steps. Embodied focus also allows us to expand our awareness and notice more closely the opportunities around us. This is one of the keys to finding our purpose in life. So the name again is Al Mutakabir. Al Mutakabir. And I want to just take a minute and just invoke Ya Mutakabir. And this is a long word with a combination of sound codes, of, of uh, sounds that all have, each have their own meaning. So this word brings together. So when you have mu, the M-U at the beginning of the word, this is to embody the fluid essence of that which follows, the divine attributes of what follows. So you're embodying the fluid essence. This is an embodied essence. And then the t, the t, at the, the, the t, I've heard it in, two different ways but they're not uh, mutually exclusive that can sometimes mean the, the mystery like it's invoking the mystery and that is also it's like the t, it constricts that which is not serving your highest good that which you don't need anymore in your life right and helps you to have that moving through and out uh, and like constricting what you don't need and releasing it from you so that you can be free right so that which constricts you gone and then the 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 cub is the the k the sound is the it's the creator but it and it's where it falls in the step levels of of creation and the manifestation of creation it is like there it's that point where 
the creation goes from one solo to the two worlds, the one world that is the pure unity and compassion and the other, it's, it's within this realm where there's pure compassion on the one hand, everything is pure compassion. And on the other hand, there is the duality or the multiplicity. So that, when it goes from the, to the, <laughs> that may be hard to recognize that there is a place in the uh, step levels of creation where the sound goes from a reference to the one and only one to that which is compassion and the duality or multiplicity which is contained in the compassion. So that's that that's the creator, the creation coming into being. And then the b, b is like that focal point where it passes through and into the material realm. So it's like that, I think of it as like the blip moving through. And this has two, that b is doubled here. So it's cub beer. And the r, the ra, the r sound is the radiance of light. So let's put that together. The mu is embodying the essence, the t, the mystery or the constricting, what no longer serves you so that you can be free from it. And cub beer hub beer so it's that the creator through that focal point the b and the b the bursting forth of the light so it's mu ta hub beer mu ta hub beer so from the creator through that central focal point through that focal point radiating light. So, ya mu ta hab beer. Ya mu ta hab beer. Ya mu ta hab beer. Ya mu ta hab here. Ya mu ta kab here. Ya mu ta kab here. Ya mu ta kab here. And as just like let feel yourself and kind of coming into your own embodiment with the mu and that constricting that which is distracting you and letting that go. And then that cub, cub, bringing you into like all of your creation into that focal point and beer beer through that focal point radiating light so really bringing you into an embodied focus within yourself Ooh, that's that embodied essence bringing yourself into your body constricting and releasing that which is distracting you and not serving your highest hub bringing all of your created self into a focal point and beer through the focal point radiating that light or into the radiant light or reflecting it's really reflecting the radiant light muta cub beer Muta cub beer. Muta cub beer. And if it helps you to focus, you can put a hand over your heart or any place else on your body that feels like it needs support. Muta cub 
fear. Muta kam fear. Muta kam fear. Muta kam fear. Muta kam fear. Ya muta kab beer. Ya muta kab beer. And Neil Douglas Clot says there is only focus. All aspects of us are involved and unified in the heart. Such a great outpouring of love is both stunning and majestic. As Jesus says in one of the Beatitudes from the Aramaic language, ripe are those who wholeheartedly follow their passion. By being unified, they see unity everywhere. Ya muta kabir. Ya muta kabir. Ya muta kabir. Ya muta kam beer. Ya muta kam beer. Ya muta kam beer. Ya muta kam beer. That author is Neil Douglas Lotz. Someone asked. Ya muta kab beer. Ya muta kab beer. Muta kab beer. Ya muta kab beer. And really let the vibrations of those sounds resonate all the way through the core of your body. Really bring the vibration of the sound into your vertical core. That stream of energy that runs through the top of your head through the center of your body, halfway front to back, halfway side to side, and along through the front of your spine and down through your base. Just feel that, that energy that moves through your body. And as you bring the sound in, let it resonate through that central channel. Muta pub beer like all of the knowledge of these sounds and all of the like the resonance of the vibrations right what makes these divine names so powerful is that these sacred sounds the sacred sound codes are it's like they're the sounds of nature and all of the sounds and the meanings of all of the sounds are inherently contained within our life force energy so in that energy that runs through the top of your head and along your vertical core and through your body through the core of your body when you really bring the the vibration into that it's awakening the knowledge that's already inside of you and your being recognizes that knowledge and really it's like your whole being will awaken to it and say oh yeah i get it i recognize that let me resonate with that let me vibrate with that i resonate right that's what it means to resonate with truth muta kabir muta kabir 
Mamuta Cub Beer. Mamuta Cub Beer. And I want to introduce another divine name, which is Al Ahad. Ahad. Which means uniquely one. Uniquely one. And I'm going to read from Neil Douglas Klotz again on this one as well. When you are guided to this pathway, take the opportunity to touch the place in your heart that feels uniquely you. Touch the place in your heart that feels uniquely you. And then Feel your own heart as a heart, as a part of the heart of sacred unity. So it's like going through your own uniquely you heart to feel your heart as a part of the sacred unity. The heart is that portal. Ya Ahad. Ahad is spelled A H A. D, ahad, 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 and it means uniquely one. Excuse me, I'm looking just as a, yeah, ahad, ahad. So I'll read on from Neil Douglas Klotz, Sufi Book of Life, on this one as well. It says, as mentioned in the previous pathway, which in this book, the previous pathway was the divine name of Wahid, Wahid. And Wahid is the single as opposed to the unique. Uh, but both of them mean one. The difference between the Sufi notions of single, wahid, and unique, ahad, are not easy to grasp. Experientially, we could state the difference like this. When I feel that the divine heart is within my heart, this is the experience of wahid. When I feel that the heart, when I feel that my heart is within the heart of the divine, this is the experience of ahad. Your unique heart within the heart of the divine. If one tries to make logical or metaphysical sense of it, the mind boggles. Fortunately, the spiritual path has little to do with logic or metaphysics. I don't know if I agree with that statement, actually, but I want to read this story that he shares here. Here's how the ninth century Sufi Abu Yazid Bistami wrestled with it. It says, in the beginning, I made four mistakes. I tried to remember, know, love, and seek Allah, God. When I came to the end of this, I realized that God had remembered me even before I remembered God. And it was the same with knowing, loving, and seeking. Allah, God knew, loved, and sought me first. By that time, I thought, that I had reached the throne of glory. I said, O throne, they say that Allah, God, rests on you. The th throne replied, we were told that Allah, God, rests in a humble heart. For 30 years, Allah served as my mirror, but now it seems I am my own mirror. I and Allah are God denies unity right when we're when there is separation it denies unity since i am no more allah or god is god's own mirror or perhaps god is the mirror of myself for i have passed away 
So call on Ahad, 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 and really bring that. You want to put your hands over your heart. Really bring that into the center of your chest. Ah, hot, and really aspirate the H. Ah, hot. Ah, hot, and let yourself again upright your spine and lean back into your body into that space behind the heart. That space behind the heart between the heart and the spine, if you can lean back into that space, that's sort of really leaning into that umbilical cord to God. Ah, hot. Ah, hot. Ah, hot. Ah, hot. Ya muta kabir. Ya ah, hot. Ya ah, hot. Ya ah, hot. Ya ah, hot. Ahad, the roots of Ahad show the absolute extent of being, right? That ah is that first sound that pierces through the membrane or through the veil between this realm and that realm of pre-eternity, the pre-existence. Ah is that first sound that pierces through that veil and the Had is, it says it's that absolute extent of being expressing itself through the point, summit, or drop of existence. So it's expressing itself through that membrane, but lean into that space behind your heart and bring all of your focus and attention to that point behind your heart, between your heart and your spine. And just feel that sound resonate there. Ah, hud. Ah, hud. Ah, hud. And just surrender and let yourself drop in. Drop in. Drop in. Leaving everything else. I'll move. Come. Beer. That's embodying that fluid essence, feeling yourself embodied in your fluid existence is constricting and releasing that which is not serving your highest cub, bringing all of your creation, created self to that focal point, the b and b beer, radiating through that focal point. Reflecting light. Muta kabir. Muta kabir. Really let that take you inward. Muta kabir. Muta kabir. And then lean into that space behind your heart. Ya ahad. Ya ahad. Ya ahad. Ya ahad. Another way where it talks about the difference between the one and the uniquely one is like al wahid, al wahid. The one is like the number one, where ahad, the unique, is like the number zero that precedes the one. So you're really falling into that space of unity behind your heart where you melt into that connection with the all that is, that umbilical cord to God. 
Ahad. Ahad. Ya mutakabir. Ya ahad. And really, you know, if you feel like things are distracting you, really emphasize the t, the t sound in mu t kabir. Mu kabir. Like t, letting go, blowing away, flicking off that which is distracting any of those distractions that draw your attention away from just being present with your own center and cub let your all of your created self drop into that focal point inside yourself and be like bursting through that focal point into the radiant light within Mu ta hab beer. Mu ta hab beer. And again, this name means majestic, also. Majestic, powerful. Mu ta hab beer. Leaning into that space behind the heart. Ya ahad. Ya ahad. Ya ahad. Ya ahad. Really dropping yourself into that place of connection where your source breathes your life force into you and manifests through you. Because there is no you in this place, there is only al ahad the uniquely one now in this again with this quote as jesus says in one of the beatitudes from the aramaic language ripe are those who wholeheartedly follow their passion by being unified they see unity everywhere and i will end us for today and open for Q&A. Let me say for those who are listening to the recording, thank you for listening. You're welcome and invited to join us live on Sundays at 10 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, 7 a.m. U.S. Pacific Time. You can find information for joining us live at communityforconsciousliving.com, communityforconsciousliving.com. While you're there, sign up to re receive the reminders and replays of these events and other events that we have going on to help us to live more consciously and in alignment with our own hearts our source and all of this creation this nature that is a part of who we are and we are a part of who it is it is not us focused and we are focused we are we are mere cells of one body right so, Bismillah. Uh, while you're there, be sure to sign up and you'll receive two free gifts. One of them being a one sheet that has the 10 spiritual principles of our human existence. And it helps us to remember who we are, what we are, what this world is about, what was life is about, why we're here. And you'll also receive a 15 minute downloadable guided meditation, which will help you to I hope you'll use it as a daily practice to help you to uh, center into this place of pure divine light, unconditional love, and eternal compassion that is the core of your own being. All right. With that, I thank you very much for being here, and I'll open for Q&A.